Good evening, YouTube. This is the assembly of the uh, four-jet carburetor that came out of the 1955 Packard with a 352 V8. And we start off with a throttle plate, and because I deviated a little bit from the manual when we disassembled it, and I'll put a link to that video up in the corner, um, I'm going to reassemble it a little bit different than what the manual says. I didn't disassemble all of the uh, linkages that are on the throttle plate and I kept them in line so that now I can just slide them back into the throttle plate and I don't have to reassemble them. They were cleaned as an assembly. So this should be relatively easy to slide this back in. Like so. Now, there's a spring right here, the secondary return spring. And it's a little bit of a fun thing to put in. I'll give you a close up as soon as I've got it close to where it should be. This is the secondary return spring with one end of the spring underneath the ear on the carburetor and the other ear underneath this tab here. And that's about a third of a turn on that spring. And once we get that, we can slide the whole thing back in. And there we have the throttle valves working as they should. We'll just clean up the numbers off of them. And those were told me where the locations went. And we'll go forward. This is boring and I know it, but I think it's important that I read it. I did the assembly and now I'll read to you what was done when the assembly was done. Install the throttle valves so that the trademark RP faces the bottom of the body and that the location marks made at disassembly correspond. Rotate the shaft to close position. At the same time, tapping the valves lightly to centralize them in the opening. Install the valve screws. Well, we've done that and here I'll show you the trademark. There's the trademark. To get back on track, reading the manual and then uh, going forward from this point on because that's what we did when we disassembled it. Um, the next step is to turn the idle mixture adjusting screws in finger tight to bottom and then back off one and a half turns. Well, in order to talk about idle adjustment screws, we have to talk about the rebuild kit. So let's talk about what's in there. There's a bunch of gaskets, a pretty complete set of gaskets. And then we come across new jet valves. So we're going to have to substitute those valves. And that's why I'm talking about the rebuild kit now. Because the next step is to put the valves into the throttle body. So we're going to use the new valves. We'll take the springs off the old valves. We've got the U crimp connectors, new ones if we need them. I never disconnected any, so we won't need any. We got the accelerator pump, the boot, and the return spring. So that's a pretty complete um, rebuild kit. Now they have in here these Daytona float valves, and I'm not I. Arthur and I have talked about it and we've decided we're going to keep the original valves. We're not going to put these valves in. Even though these are new, it's a, a new idea. It's a, rather than having a needle as a seat, it's actually got a rubber s seal there. And it just makes me nervous. So I guess what we're going to do is uh, 
go with what we got. At this point, we're going to use parts from the rebuild kit. We're going to take the old spring and put it on the needle and find a hole where it screws into. Screw it in, finger tight. And then the manual says one and a half turns. Half, one, one and a half. Let's do the same thing with the other side. When I took them out, it was uh, one and a quarter turns. So, but that'll be adjustment on the car. That'll get it close enough. And I should also mention that at this point, everything should move nice and freely. These, this, these valves return even on the secondary, that little tiny secondary spring that's in there. So everything should be free. Place the throttle body gasket in position on the bottom of the main body. This is the main body and this is the gasket. Be sure that all the holes are aligned. Position the throttle body on the gasket and install the retaining screws. Well, that was a very important step there, is what we want to do is take the old gasket and line it up with the new gasket and make sure all the holes are where holes should be and no holes are where no holes should be and check both sides. So put the gasket down, make sure it's in the right position and all the holes line up there. And take the throttle body, and this thing goes like so. Okay. Place the main body and throttle body assembly in an upright position. If the fuel inlet gasket has been removed, position the screen in the recess and install the retainer. Make sure it is fully seated. Well, that was a surprise to me. I found that in the cleaning. I didn't see it in the disassembly. It must be there, but I didn't go back and look. But I'll show you what they're talking about here. This is the screen they're talking about right there. And they're telling me that that can come out of there and I can't figure out how to take it out. So I left it in and cleaned it uh, with a spray of uh, um, carburetor cleaner. And it flows fluid both back and forth between the accelerator pump well and, and this well here. And there's no obstructions. And if you look real careful, you can see the bottom of the uh, pit through the screen if I move the camera a little bit there. So that's the screen they're talking about. Install the power valve and the gasket. We've got a new gasket with the rebuild kit. And here's the power valve. It's nice and clean. It works free. It's not shiny, but it's clean. And the power valve goes right there. Okay, I'll show you the power valve. Right there is a power valve, and that goes next to the accelerator pump well, so it's easy to find. There isn't one in the secondary side anyway, but this is a primary side, and the power valve is in the bottom of that well right there. Next step in this process, drop the steel pump 
Discharge ball check into the opening. Insert the spring and the guide. Make certain that the guide is in the slots and fully seated flush with the top of the casting. I'll show you what they're talking about. In the rebuild kit they supply a new check ball, spring, and guide. And those go into this hole right here. So let's put them in. So here we have the ball. And drop it in the hole. Make sure I put it in the right hole. I can see it. And then the spring and the guide. Drop that into the hole. And line up the slots. And it's supposed to go down flush. And that is a little more. Flush. I'll show you. That's the top of the guide right there. And there's a spring and a, they're calling it a ball check underneath there. Install the main metering jets. Install the larger jets, the size is stamped on the jet, in the secondary side of the body. They're talking about the carburetor body, and they're saying stamped on the side of the jet is a size, and I couldn't find any. So uh, the only way I know is, is I laid it out on, a, on the disassembly tray uh, where they came from, and I'm gonna put them back in the same position. This is the primary side, this is the secondary side. We know that this is the primary side because this is the accelerator pump well. So we're going to put in the main jets, both front and rear, uh, and we're going to put them in in the position they came out of, and knowing that the main jets, the larger ones, should be in the rear and the secondaries, but we have no way of identifying which one, where they came from other than where they came out of. It's the primary main jets. That's the main jets installed. Uh, two on the primary, two on the secondary. The secondary side being the larger of the two. Um, they say you can identify them by what's stamped on the jet, but I couldn't find any markings on them. Okay, this is the primary side of the carburetor. You can tell that because this is the well for the accelerator pump and the power valve is right here in the bottom of the bowl and the two main jets are right there. Place the Venturi gaskets in position, making sure that the holes are aligned. Position the Venturi cluster, which has the pump discharge nozzles on the primary side. Install the retaining screws, then position the other Venturi cluster on the secondary side and install the retaining screws. Okay, let's do that. This is the Venturi cluster that has the pump discharge nozzles in it. And that goes on the primary side like so. And we know this is primary because of the accelerator pump well. Now we did get new gaskets, so we want to make sure again that they line up. Thank uh -huh.
the secondary side. Get a new cast for that. Drop the aluminum pump inlet ball check in the inlet passage of the pump well and place the pump return spring in the well. Okay. So here we have the carburetor and the primary side facing us. And the flashlight is covering half the well of the accelerator pump well. And down on the bottom of that is a little hole. And that's where they want you to drop the ball. And then the retaining spring fits in the base of that to keep the ball from coming back out. The rebuild kit comes with a new ball check. I don't know why they call it a ball. Most normal people call it a check valve, check ball. But this is a ball check and a new return spring. I'll drop that in there. Make sure it goes in the hole. It's in the hole. What I've done is I've used the old spring and the old ball check from the well of the accelerator pump versus using the new ones. The new ball didn't fit all the way down into the seat and didn't allow the spring to fit into the recess. And then once I put the old ball in, which did fit in, the spring didn't fit in tight enough to stay in place and hold that ball in place. So I am ended up using the old spring and the old check ball. That completes the assembly of the main body and now we move on to the air horn. And the very first step in the air horn is to assemble the accelerator pump if you were to have deassembled it when we took the carburetor apart. But because we got a part in the rebuild kit completely assembled, we didn't assemble it. So we'll skip to the end of the paragraph, which says, insert the rubber seal in the air horn so that the casting is in the position in the groove of the seal. Connect the plunger rod to the activating lever and install the retainer. This is the old accelerator pump or plunger that they're calling it. And this is the new one. And it goes into the air horn right here. This rubber seal has a groove in it. They want that groove to be, they want the casting of the carburetor to be in the groove. Like so. And then if we take the plunger and stick it in a hole in the rubber seal down there. That makes short work of installing that. Slip the power piston into the air horn and lightly stake the retainer in position. We didn't take it out when we disassembled it, but I'll show it to you in case you haven't watched the disassembly film. If you look real close, you can see what looks like chisel marks at the base of the power piston. And that's what they call staking. Place the air horn gasket in position. Well, we want to do the same thing we did with the base gasket, and that's to make sure that there's holes where there should be holes, and no holes where there shouldn't be any holes. So we took the old gasket and we compared it as best we could with the new gasket, because the old gasket is broken and we found that all the holes line up. So now it's time to put it on the carburetor. Install the inlet strainer, needle seat, and gasket on the primary side of the carburetor. Assemble the float needle and the clip on the float assembly. Position the float assembly at the supports and install the hinge pin. Install the float assembly on the secondary side in the same manner. Here we have the strainer, the gasket, the needle seat, and the needle. And the needle gets installed on the float, and the seat and the gasket and the strainer get installed in this hole right here for the primary, secondary side, and this hole right here for the primary side. So let's get that done. So install the strainer. G 
gasket on the seat. And put the seat in the air horn. And do the same thing for the secondary. Install the needle onto the float assembly. And this is the primary one, so it goes right here. Making sure the needle goes into the seat. Into the seat. Take the hinge pin and put it in. Like so. And do the same thing for the secondary side. Making sure that the needle goes into the seat. Get the hinge pin. Adjust the float level as outlined under float adjustment. Turn the page. Float adjustment. Both sets of floats are adjusted in the same manner and to the same dimensions. The air horn gasket should be in place while making the adjustment. To check the float level, place the air horn assembly in an inverted position on a flat surface and place float gauge gauge J-5399-A in position as shown in figure 23. Lift the floats until the needle is seated. The floats should just touch the top portion of the gauge. Bend the float arms at C as required to make the adjustment. All of that for this last sentence. The scale dimension from the bottom of the floats to the air horn gasket should be one and five eighths. So what they're saying is from the bottom of the float to the gasket should be one and five eighths inches. And it is. Okay. Float drop. To check the float drop, place the air horn in an upright position. The distance from the air horn gasket to the bottom of the float should be two and a quarter inches. Adjusting as necessary by removing the float and bending the small tang D, which contacts the needle seat. Bending the tang towards the needle seat will lessen the drop and away from the seat will increase the drop. So now we got to measure that drop. What they want us to do is to invert it, put it in the upright position, and get the floats to drop, and then to measure from the gasket to the bottom of the float. And I have two and a quarter inches. Install the air horn assembly on the main body being careful to guide the pump plunger into the well and not to bend the float assemblies and destroy the adjustments. Align the air horn in the gasket, install the screws loosely. Tighten three inner screws first, then tighten the remaining screws. So what we're going to do now is make a carburetor. Carefully feeding everything down in, get the floats in, Get the plunger in. Get the... And have the gasket still aligned. Like so.
Tighten the inner three screws first. That's this one right here. This one right here. And this one right here. Then tighten the outer ones. If the choke housing has been removed, assemble the housing and the gasket on the air horn and install the retaining screws. Well, we did remove it, so now we've got to put it back on. It's pretty simple. It's just two screws and a gasket. And they did give us a new gasket. I'm not really turning them very tight. It may look like it. What I'm doing is pushing hard on them so they don't come up out of the threads because these things are all worn off already. Assemble the choke piston on the shaft link and install the piston. Well, we didn't take it apart. So here's the shaft. Slide the choke shaft assembly through the housing and air horn. Start the piston into the bore and rotate the shaft clockwise to install the piston in the bore. Here we go. They want us to take the choke valve shaft and slide it into the housing and position the piston so that it will slide into the bore by rotating it clockwise. Slide the choke valve through the choke shaft and position it so that the trademark RP, Rochester Products, is facing up when the valve is closed. Install the retaining screws. Do not tighten. The trademark RP is very faint on the choke valve, but we can see it and that side faces up. That means the choke valve has to slide in this way. And center it in the uh, throat. So install the two screws loosely. It's okay to drop the screw down the throat of the carburetor now. Just not when it's on the motor. Install the choke lever and collar assembly on the end of the choke shaft. Install the trip lever and the retaining screw. This is the trip lever and retaining screw. And they go into the side of the carburetor right there on top of the collar. So now I'll go put it all together for you. The choke kick down lever goes on to the end of the choke shaft like so. Then the trip lever goes on the end of the choke shaft, like so. And then the retaining screw goes in there to hold everything together. Like so. There's the trip lever, the retaining screw, the choke collar, and the choke all assembled. Turn the shaft to put the valve in the closed position. To provide the correct fit of the choke valve in the air horn, push lightly on the trip lever to push the shaft inward to obtain a minimum clearance of 20 thousandths of an inch between the trip lever and the collar assembly. While holding this position, tighten the choke valve screws. Okay, let's do that. What they want is you to hold the, the choke valve closed, and they want 20 thousandths clearance between the end of the choke shaft and the uh, trip lever, which you can see I have. So they want us to tighten these screws. Place the baffle within the choke housing. Assemble the coil cover and the gasket on the housing. 
rotate the cover, making sure the coil contacts the shaft link. Then install the cover screws, retain retainers loosely. Rotate the cover until the index mark on the cover is aligned with the center index mark on the housing. Insert the baffle. There's a flat edge on one side that goes towards the bottom. Insert, put the gasket on the coil cover and put it in so it contacts the choke. And you'll know that because the choke will turn. See, watch. There, see it turns. Now I couldn't find any index marks anywhere. So I'm just going to turn it so the choke is just closed. And put the retaining screws in. So that's it for now. That's the end of the assembly of the carburetor. There are some external adjustments that have to be made. Um, I'm not going to put that in this video because that makes this video tremendously long. So what I'm going to do is make a third video in this series on external adjustments. That'll be the next video. So that's it for now. There'll be more.